Shall we pray together? Our gracious Father in heaven, when we were sinners, you saved us from eternal condemnation and eternal hell. And we thank you so much for making us your children. And now we are serving you in the church together to glorify you and to please you. So Lord, we are here to listen to your word again. Teach us and guide us and strengthen us so that we can be your instrument in coming days. Especially, uh, we are praying and preparing for the summer retreat. Lord, thank you so much for giving us another chance to gather in Gongju Retreat Center and have a summer retreat seven times this year. So Lord, uh, help us and give us wisdom so that this time also many people can come and be saved and we can add many more souls to your kingdom. So from the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, let's turn to Romans chapter 16, verse 19. Romans chapter 16, verse 19. Okay, shall we read it together? For your obedience has become known to all, therefore I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. In the last chapter of the epistle to Romans, Apostle Paul saying that your obedience has become known to all. You know, when some uh, church is doing very well, uh, the fact in encourages us. Actually, uh, last time I heard that uh, this year there was a summer retreat in the Philippines and almost 2,000 got baptized. So that kind of news is really encouraging us. And Paul continues, Therefore I am glad on your behalf. So he was very happy about them. And the rest of the verse is what I want to talk about today. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. As a Christian, we need to learn more and more. We need to gain more knowledge and we have to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, even physically, a baby, uh, when baby grows, uh, the baby learns many things, uh, how to talk, you know, uh, and many subjects in the school so that they become adult. Just like that, even as Christians, there are so many things we need to learn to become a good Christian. So Apostle Paul is exhorting uh, the, the Romans, uh, the brethren in Rome, that I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. I want you to be wise in what is good. No. Do you know some, uh, even some brothers, sisters, they have a great knowledge about the worldly things like uh, which baseball team won last time or uh, the movies and dramas and actors, actresses, or even the how to invest money. They have a great knowledge. So whenever they open their mouth, they start talking about them. Right? But what about this uh, spiritual knowledge and then how to live a good Christian life? And what about the knowledge about Jesus Christ? And what about the, uh, the signs of the end times? You know, all this knowledge we need as Christians. So that's why Apostle Paul is saying, you have to be wise in what is good. You know, how to read the Bible, how to evangelize other people. You know, in Korea, there is uh, some uh, program called the Samuel Academy. I think uh, it's the uh, Samuel Academy. It's for the uh, college students who wants to evangelize others. So they are memorizing the scriptures and they are learning many facts about the Bible so that they can witness to others. Great, you know, how to start uh, talking about the gospel, you know, how to approach them. And uh, if they are interested in, for example, science, uh, we can bring up some scientific, scientific facts in the Bible or uh, some people are interested in the history so we can talk about the history you know the Bible has a lot of historical scientific and uh, even the prophecies so depending on the, 
the person's interest, we can uh, share uh, some topics. So, I want you to be wise in what is good and simple or uh, innocent in another version. NIV and NA, uh, New King James, uh, NASB says uh, innocent, innocent concerning evil. Actually, if you have a great knowledge about God and the Bible, you will, you will, be, uh, you will keep yourself away from evil. Actually, that's uh, very natural. God is light. And when you know more and more about the Bible, and when you have uh, more knowledge about Jesus Christ, uh, you are far from the evil things, actually. Right? So, it's important to grow and know more and more about what is good, right? That is how we grow as Christians. First of all, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of the Bible will keep you away from uh, sin. That is important, okay? So let's turn to Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse 16. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 let's read it together behold I send you out as a sheep in the midst of wolves therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves we are like a sheep in the middle of the wolves you know, this world is under the sway of Satan. So we are basically living in the enemy's land. I always tell you that, you know, this world belongs to Satan. He has the power and control. Of course, God allows Satan uh, to have control over the whole world for a, for a while, actually, because the Satan will be judged. But until Jesus comes again, we know that the whole world is under the influence of Satan and we have to be very wise. I send you out as a sheep in the midst of wolves, therefore be wise as serpents. Serpents refer to Satan actually, right? In the Garden of Eden, the serpent tempted Eve. So why Jesus said you should be wise as serpent? Uh, if you um, keep reading, this um, uh, in other part of the Bible we know that the people in the world they are very wise and smart regarding these worldly things you know they invent so many uh, gadgets and computers and the electronics and then they are good at uh, like uh, you know inventing some financial uh, products or Anyway, in this world, we have to admit that these unbelievers are very wise. They are much better than Christians in some regard, right? How to live uh, in this world nicely, you know, and uh, successfully, right? Because their focus is uh, on this world, right? How to, be, how to be successful in this world. How to get a better education. How to get a better job. How to how to uh, live nicely uh, after retirement, you know, how to, uh, how to prepare for your, you know, after retirement, for something like that, right? And Jesus said, we have to be wise as a serpent, meaning we Christians, we should be wise. Of course, you know, what we are wise about is different from the worldly people. We have to be wise in what is good, right? The true knowledge is always from God. You know. Remember, after being born again, we have to seek the true knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, the genuine knowledge, not this uh, knowledge from this world. You know. So sometimes I'm, I feel very sad when I see uh, even Christians are so into these worldly things. Uh, in Korea these days, the problem is like a cyber money, like a Bitcoin or uh, stocks or even the, uh, what is it, real estate. You know, they, even at young age, some people uh, make a lot of money, 
by investing in, for example, Bitcoin. And then even Christians, they envy them. Oh, I wish I, I, I had earned, you know, just like him. I want to be successful financially, like others. So it's not like, uh, you know, uh, these um, unsaved people listen to the Christian, but the other way around. Christians are listening to these unsaved people, these worldly people, about how to be successful in this world. That's very sad, actually. Do you know when Jesus comes again, everything in this world will be burned and then they'll become nothing. Do you remember you know, when Jesus comes as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with all the angels and all these uh, uh, Christians who were raptured uh, right before the seven year tribulation, when Jesus comes with them, he will be the judge. And whatever they enjoy, the worldly people enjoy in this world will be burned and will become, will turn into ashes, okay? That's the true knowledge. I believe that, you know, the wisdom, the true wisdom is always acknowledging God and knowing God, actually, okay? Let's turn to Job, chapter 28, verse 28, Job. Chapter 28, verse 28. Job chapter 28, verse 28. Let's read it together. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. If you are truly wise, you fear God. You know who God is. God is the creator. God is the one who determines how long you will live, basically. You know, it's all up to God. You know. I'm Korean. Why? Because God uh, made me born in Korea. Okay? And if you are smart, it's because God made you that way. Or if you are born in a rich family and enjoy all the things, it's because God uh, allowed you to enjoy all of these things. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Let's remember, you know, God is, uh, he is, he has created everything and everything is under his control. Even Satan, if you read the, the book of Job, in the beginning, the Satan was, uh, uh, wanted to, like, uh, you know, um, take everything from Job. But he need to get the permission from God first. So God set the limit. Okay, you can take everything from him, but do not take, do not touch his body, or you can make him sick, but do not take his life. It's all up to God, who set the limit within which the Satan can operate. Actually, right? The fear of the Lord is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding to depart from evil. Do you know, even as a Christian, you know, sometimes uh, people think about sin is nothing because we know that Jesus conquered sin and death and we have become righteous, but still, the sin can make you useless before Jesus Christ. I saw many brothers, sisters who fell into temptation and uh, who could not uh, continue to live as Christians uh, you know, their salvation is never lost. We know that. But they cannot work for the Lord anymore because uh, they are disqualified, basically. Uh, some, they committed some serious sin and then they cannot work for the Lord anymore. That's very sad, right? We have to be very wise. Okay? And sometimes we have to learn from uh, the unbelievers too, you know, because they are very smart in this world. Let's turn to Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Let's read it together. So the master commanded the, the unjust steward 
because he hath dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Again, just like Jesus said, you have to be wise as a serpent. Here, Jesus is saying that sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Sons of light refer to we Christians. But sons of this world are more shrewd, smarter, wiser, you know, in this world. So we have to learn from them. Why? I think uh, uh, you can read from the beginning of the chapter 16 of Luke, uh, there was a you know, steward who was taking care of the finance of his master, but uh, he was not, um, kind of, he was cheating that, so he was about to be fired. And then he was uh, basically uh, changing the, uh, the terms of the agreement uh, for the debtors of his master. So, uh, for example, verse, verse uh, 5, so he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. He just took the 50 um, uh, measures of wheat off the debtor's um, agreement, basically. And, and then, verse 7, then he said to another, and how much do you owe? So he said, a hundred measures of, oh, so a hundred measures of wheat, uh, right? Uh, and he said to him, take your bill and write 80. Basically, he, he was telling the debtors of his master to come and then changing the terms in the contract so that they can pay less, right? I was wondering why the master commanded him. Verse 8, so the master commanded the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. Of course, you know, it was a great loss for the master. So in that regard, the master didn't command him. Because when I was reading this Bible, in the beginning I couldn't understand. What, what the master commanded the unjust steward about is, he prepared for his future while he still has that position you know the steward of the master he was doing his best to prepare for his life after you know after he lose his job in that regard you know he, he, he he's been preparing so verse 9 verse 9 and i say to you make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Listen, we are Christian. We know there's a heaven and hell. And we know we have to preach the gospel to others. And what do you prepare for? What do you do for your future, basically? When you go to heaven, of course, you'll be so happy to join our Lord. And we can see him face to face. And then the heaven is the place. Uh, where everything we need and des uh, we desire uh, is coming true. Okay? That's good. But if you truly believe in heaven, there's another thing you have to consider. Like in verse 9, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon. What does that mean? If you truly know that the money, mammon means money, right? The money in this world will be useless in heaven. Money will be useful only while you are here in this world, right? So when you go to heaven, you cannot take even a single penny with you. So suppose you spend your money wisely. If you truly believe in heaven, what you can do is you spend money for your friends who are not saved yet. So you can buy them some dinners or you can buy them some gifts and then uh, slowly, slowly you can evangelize them so that if they are they listen to you and when they get saved, what happens is, in verse 9, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon that when you fail, when you fail means when you die and when you go to him, uh, heaven, they may receive you into an everlasting home. They. They means those who you uh, evangelized. Those you, uh, you helped to be saved. They will be receiving you and they will say in heaven, 
Thank you so much for preaching gospel to me. Thank you so much for sharing this gospel. Even though I said no so many times, you kept insisting. And then you, you always ask me to listen to the word of God. And finally, I'm here thanks to you. Isn't it wise? You know, because the soul you helped to be saved will be there in heaven forever and ever. And that, that the, good, the good work you did will remain forever and ever. You will be glorified forever if you are truly wise, right? If you are truly wise, you will prepare for your future. Like that shrewd, unjust steward. What he did was unjust. Jesus you know, mentioned it, this unjust steward, because he was uh, you know, uh, causing loss to his master. However, he was preparing for the future after he gets fired. That part is good because what about you? you know, brothers, sisters, are you preparing for the time you will spend in eternity? I mean, in heaven eternally? You know? For example, Jesus said, if you give a glass of cold water to this little one, you will be rewarded. Uh, yesterday and today, two days, uh, we are making kimchi in Suwon Church. This time, not that much, uh, 1,200 pieces of cabbage we bought and we made kimchi. Usually in the winter time, uh, we make the double, uh, like a, we have uh, 2,500 uh, cabbages, basically. And it's a lot of work. Basically, uh, so many brothers and sisters came and we were washing the cabbage and then cutting it and then uh, uh, putting some salt in it and then it's a lot of work. And uh, we finished uh, just today uh, that 1,200 cabbages, uh, we, we turned them into kimchi. I was thinking that, you know, wow, those brothers and sisters who came to work together, they are very wise. Why? Jesus said, if you just give a glass of cold water to this little one, you will be rewarded. But what about this kimchi? We are kim eating kimchi every, every time we have, a, we have a meal, basically. You know, Koreans, you know, without kimchi, we cannot eat, right? So that means whenever brother sister have this kimchi, especially half of it was for the summer retreat. What is summer retreat? Summer retreat, so many people come and they listen to the word of God and they get saved. And then, you know, on the last day of the summer retreat, whenever you see the long line of people waiting for to be baptized, it's, it's really touching your heart. You know, uh, we are having seven times uh, summer retreat this year. And then every time, like a 600 or 700, even 800 people get baptized. And the kimchi we make is for them, you know, when they come and when they eat, Without kimchi, you know, they cannot have a meal. So we are preparing for this summer retreat this time. So this is what I'm saying, you know. Brothers, sisters come and they spend time and it's really tiring job, you know. Uh, two days in a row, we are working very hard to make a kimchi for what? For the future, you know, for God's glory and for these uh, lost souls. And then when they get saved, even your work you know, for making kimchi will be counted. And then God will reward you. Very wise, actually. Even though we are living in this world, we are living for eternity. Whatever you do has an eternal consequence. Do you know that? No. Suppose you read the Bible and then meditate on it. God will say, good job. And then, you know, the reward will be there forever and ever. So isn't it wise to prepare for our future in heaven? You know, to invite these friends, so make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon, spending this money which will be burned, you know, when Jesus comes and one which will be destroyed. And then we, if we can turn this uh, unrighteous mammon, this money, and then we can preach the gospel to these low souls. 
that money we spend will be so worthy, right? We learn all these things in the church, actually. The reason why uh, you should uh, join the church and learn and grow is because you'll become wise when you come to church and listen to the sermons and when you fellowship together. You'll see. You'll know what is the will of God and what is the wisest way of spending your time in this world. You'll learn and you'll grow more and more. Right? The true knowledge is learned in the church. True knowledge comes from God. No matter how much time you spend in the school, you don't really uh, learn the true knowledge. Maybe the knowledge you are learning in the school might be useful while you are living in this world, but the knowledge you are learning from in the church is useful for eternity. That's the difference. And it's from God. Let's turn to Job chapter 12. Verse 13, Job, chapter 12, verse 13. Job, chapter 12, verse 13. Let's read it together. With him are wisdom and strength. He has a counsel and understanding. With him, with God, are wisdom and strength. All the wisdom, the true wisdom is from God. Remember. You might read many books or you might uh, have a lot of experience, like uh, you might have uh, great knowledge in whatever you do, but the true wisdom, this wisdom is with God. Um, I have a PhD degree in applied math. Okay? Um, when I was in the States, I studied this financial product called options and derivatives. So I was applying mathematics to solve the problems in the financial sector, which was good. It was very interesting. When you meet someone with a PhD degree, uh, you might think that you know, those with a doctor degree, they know everything. No, it's not like that. You know, those who have earning this PhD degree, they are specializing in very specific area. Of course, they have a knowledge uh, in general, for example, you know, I, I, I took some courses in mathematics and I know, uh, you know, some part of it. But my specialization was with uh, financial products, basically. Okay. And I was doing like a simulation and then I was, uh, you know, formulating the formula for the how to eventually evaluate this financial product, how to has it with other financial product. And then all this knowledge, uh, you know, uh, I learned. However, this knowledge is nothing compared to the wisdom of God, actually. The wisdom of God is so precious, so valuable, and it's eternal, basically. You know? Whatever you learn in this world is for only for your physical life. And then even then, knowledge changes all the time. Okay? Well, whatever you learned yesterday, uh, maybe it's useless next day. But the knowledge in the Bible, the knowledge of God, is eternal. You realize the difference when you get to heaven, actually. With him are wisdom and strength. He has a counsel and understanding. And also Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. Verse 36. Job chapter 38. Verse 36. Let's read it together. Who has put wisdom in the mind? Or who has given understanding to the heart? It's God. He's the source of wisdom, source of understanding. And that's why we have to pray to God, you know. This time, uh, I will be visiting Bangladesh for a mission trip. And uh, I have a really mission this time. Um, there's no uh, video of the Bible seminar in Bengali language yet. That's what I heard, right? So this time I'm bringing the system to make it possible. 
of course we cannot have this uh, system just like uh, we have in Korea because uh, it's too expensive and then we cannot get all the equipment there so I, uh, I have a simple system but we can produce very nice uh, good quality the, the video of the Bible seminar of good quality actually uh, so that's my mission but anyway all this knowledge I'm really thank God for giving us this equipment and uh, all this system because we are preaching the gospel to others you know how many people are speaking Bengali uh, more than 200 million people so I'm praying now that suppose we are producing this video uh, of the Bible seminar and put it online and there might be people who are who will be watching it and who will be saved I'm praying now and then all this knowledge is really uh, you know I, I told you that just like the people of this world we the sons of light we have to learn more and more for what to preach the gospel more effectively to preach the gospel more efficiently so that you know if we can save at least one more soul that is that's worth it actually we'll do our best you know, to preach the gospel as much as possible we learn it in the church because in the church what is the church church is the group of the born again Christians right and our primary concern is how to preach the gospel so we are praying about it we are working together and even the uh, like uh, we are uh, you know um, offering this uh, money for that mission so we are basically working together right you learn everything for your Christian life in the church that's why you should not leave the church Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1 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 let's read it together a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire he rages against all wise judgment a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire those who want to be alone you know Christian life is church life Christian life is fellowship life we are together that's what God intended us to be you know we should be united as one if you are a Christian and if you say that oh, I can study Bible alone I can watch the you know sermons online and then you just uh, stay at home not coming to the church you are isolating yourself why you are seeking your own desire because when we are together of course you know, sometimes uh, you know when you are with other people uh, you have to sacrifice sometimes right whenever we have a summer retreat in Gongju retreat center sometimes I feel sorry for some brother sisters who are staying in a big room together they some people call it refugee camp you know they have a nice house and they have a nice place to stay back there at their house but they come to the summer retreat and then it's a big temporary place with uh, like 100 200 brothers uh, staying together very uncomfortable to take a shower you have to wait in a line long time and sometimes it's very hot humid but you are not seeking your own desire you want to return the grace of God the love of God even a little bit and that's why we are together working together to share this gospel for unsaved people he rages against all wise judgment when you come to church you learn all kinds of wisdom because when we serve the Lord we are doing everything with the wisdom and power of God remember we need to get the wisdom and strength from God that's how we serve the Lord not with our own wisdom not with our own strengths let's turn to uh, Exodus chapter 35 Exodus chapter 35 verse 30 and 31 
and 32. Uh, Exodus chapter 35, verses 30 to 32. Three verses. Let's read it together. And Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge, and all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze. For example, to make a tabernacle, you know, that requires a lot of the uh, uh, expertise, actually, right? And God called uh, a man named Bezalel, the son of Rai, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. So God chose one man to do all kinds of this artistic work. And you know what happened? Verse 31, And he, God, has filled him, Bezalel, with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship. That's true. God filled him with everything he needs, all the wisdom and skill, so that he can do all the work required of him to build the tabernacle, to, to make all kinds of instrument. It is God who always provides everything we need in our Christian life through the church through the church, right? Do you know we have this Bible seminar, like uh, this program. So first day we are talking about God, the Bible, and then our life, you know, the destiny. And the second day we are talking about the uh, past history, like uh, Garden of Eden, and Noah's Ark, and Sodom and Gomorrah, Tower of Babel, and Exodus. And then we talk about the history of Israel, and then the fourth day, usually we talk about the prophecy concerning the future, the end times, the signs of end times. And then we talk about the sin and judgment. And then finally we share this gospel message. This system, quite effective. And I believe that is what God gave us, this wisdom. So that we can preach the gospel all over the world. It's quite effective. Do you know why God uses our church? And why so many people are getting saved every day all over the world? Because our brothers and sisters, they are attending this Bible seminar so many times a year, like uh, maybe more than 10 times. Even the summer retreat is uh, basically the Bible seminar, right? So when you attend the Bible seminar again and again, many things are repeated so that even the brothers and sisters, they, mem they remember all these evidences naturally. Because when you listen to the same thing again and again, whether you intend it or not, you remember it. And then you share with other people. Do you know that this uh, coronavirus, this pandemic is one of the signs of Jesus' second coming, which is in uh, you know, Matthew chapter 24. And there are other signs like earthquakes and famines and pestilences. It's not just the coronavirus. Have you heard about the monkeypox, which is spreading these days? There will be more and more pestilences. Remember, in 1960s, doctors said, you don't have to worry about this contagious disease anymore because now the vaccines are developed and then there are such a great advance in the medical science. The doctor said in 1960s, you don't worry about this contagious disease we have a control of, over them. But now, they still never say that. Monkeypox. This is really looks uh, you know, scary, actually, right? Anyway, God has filled this person, Bezalel, with the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is Spirit of Wisdom. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Isaiah Chapter 11, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Let's read it together. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. This is about Jesus Christ, by the way. Verse 1, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. And a branch shall grow out of his root. This branch with a capital B is, refers to Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Do you know when Jesus was taking the baptism, the spirit of God was resting upon his head as a dove, right? The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So if you really want to have the knowledge, the true knowledge, pray to God because the spirit of God is a spirit of wisdom and spirit of understanding. You learn whatever you need for your Christian life in the church. Suppose you want to preach the gospel to others. You can pray to God, what can I do? What kind of evidences will be working for that um, uh, one of my friends? Or how can I approach them? You know? What kind of verse, the scripture, will be touching their heart? You pray to God more and more and God will equip you for you know, his work, his ministry. Do you remember the queen of Ethiopia, she came to see Solomon. Why? She heard that King Solomon was very wise and she wanted to learn from him. Let's turn to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verse 31. Luke chapter 11, verse 31. Luke Chapter 11, verse 31. Let's read it together. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon. Who is this? Jesus Christ. The queen of south will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation. What does that mean? In the time of judgment for this generation, the queen of south will condemn them. Why? She came all the way from Ethiopia, 4,000 kilometers. So up and down is 8,000 kilometers. Such a long trip, long distance. Why? She wanted to uh, hear the wisdom of Solomon. She was seeking the wisdom. She was seeking the knowledge. She came all the way to see Solomon. But what about you? Jesus said, Indeed, Solomon is here. This is about Jesus Christ. Do you know, Moses, he didn't have the uh, New Testament, even Daniel, for example. He didn't have the New Testament. He didn't know much about Jesus Christ. Of course, uh, he knew some prophecies of a Messiah, but he didn't have the clear knowledge of Jesus Christ. What about us? You have the Bible, four Gospels, Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do you know that these four Gospels show the four different aspects of our Messiah, our Christ Jesus? For example, Matthew is emphasizing Jesus is the king of the Jews, right? But Mark is describing Jesus as a servant. That's why there's no genealogy, because servant has no genealogy. And Luke says that, you know, Jesus is a man. You know? That's why the genealogy starts from Adam. The genealogy in Matthew is a genealogy of uh, Joseph, which starts from Abraham. But the genealogy in Luke is a genealogy of uh, Mary, starting from Adam, because uh, Luke is saying that Jesus is man. You know, God became flesh, right? And John, Gospel of John, describing Jesus as God, right? So there are four animals for each 
uh, gospel, the lion for Matthew, right? And 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 this uh, uh, bull or it's not bull, ox for the uh, Mark, and then the man for Luke, and then eagle for John, because these four gospels are given to give us the complete description of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you better read it so that you understand who Jesus was and what, what is his teaching and then you know we have to imitate Jesus more and more. That's why God gave us the Bible. So he's there who is greater than Solomon and when the Queen of South came all the way 4,000 kilometers to see Solomon what are you doing to understand more about Jesus Christ. You don't even read the Bible. That's why the Queen of South will condemn this generation. It's right there. The Bible is right there. And there are many books about Jesus Christ, but people do not read, the, read them, right? They don't care about Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we have all the knowledge and we have all the treasure in Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Let's read it together. That their hearts, hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of Father and of Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus, verse 3 says, in whom, in Jesus, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the treasures and knowledge and understanding, all the good things, what is good, is hidden in Jesus Christ. We have to listen to Jesus Christ. We have to meditate on Jesus Christ. We have to imitate Jesus Christ. We have to read the Bible more and more. We have to learn everything from Jesus Christ. Because in Him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We have to be wise in what is good. Okay? In Job, Job is describing how people go to the very remote place to get the, like, a, uh, what is it, the steel or some, some bronze, you know, these uh, materials, actually. Let's turn to Job, chapter 28. Job, chapter 28. Job, chapter 28. Uh, iron, yes. Uh, verse 1 to 4 Job chapter 28 verse 1 to 4 let's read it together surely there is a mine for silver in a place where gold is refined iron is taken from the earth and copper is smelted from ore man puts an end to uh, darkness and searches every recess for ore in the darkness and the shadow of death he breaks open a shaft away from people in places forgotten by feet they hang far away from men they swing to and fro so this is describing how people get uh, iron and copper and all these uh, you know this uh, uh, material right uh, verse Verse 3, man puts an end to darkness and searches every recess for ore in the darkness and the shadow of death. People go that so far, nobody reaches there. It's a place of darkness, but every recess means every corner they are searching for iron and copper. Verse 4, he breaks open a shaft away from people he in places forgotten by feet. They hang far away from man. They swing to and fro. They swing to and fro means... They are uh, coming down with a rope and then swinging. Why? Just one purpose, to get iron and copper and all these precious metals. And this shows that what we should do to, to, to seek 
the knowledge and wisdom, all the riches in hidden in Jesus Christ. This is not about iron. This is not about copper. This is about how to, how to find the treasures in Jesus Christ. When people are working so hard and going so far to get this um, iron and copper, so what are you doing to get this, uh, the precious knowledge of Jesus Christ? Okay? We have to learn more and more. Actually, doctors, they are learning a great amount of knowledge to save people, right? But what about us? We need all this knowledge to save many souls. Even doctors can fix the body of a patient, but the body will die eventually. Anyway, the death comes to everyone. For us, the knowledge we have can save a soul and we can give eternal life. So what is more precious? What is more valuable? Okay? The knowledge which saves soul is much more important than the knowledge which saves human body. So what are you doing to get the knowledge? You come to the church and you listen to the word of God and also you study the Bible more and more. You read it. You memorize it. Meditate on it. Why? Because the, the Bible, the scripture, will give you the wisdom to salvation. Okay? Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Let's read it together. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Sure, this scripture can make you wise for salvation. E even after salvation, you need to learn more and more. You need to learn all this wisdom and knowledge from the scripture because verse 16 and 17, let's read it together. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's learn more and more from the scripture. Let's read it more. Okay? Satan is so powerful and so uh, smart, actually, much smarter than us sometimes. But because of the wisdom from God, that's how we can uh, overcome Satan and this world, right? Let's turn to Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 98. Psalm 119, verse 98. Psalm 119, verse 98. Let's read it together. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. You want to be wiser than Satan? Your commandments means the scripture, the law of God, the word of God will make you wiser than your enemies. That's true. You know, in this world, it's getting more and more sinful. And the Satan is trying to uh, tempt Christians in so many different ways. We need more wisdom from God, more knowledge actually. And then it's all in the Bible, right? And that's why we need to learn more things about Jesus Christ and the ways to salvation and how to avoid these evil things in this world. And how to preach the gospel to the unsaved people and how to share this good news with others there are so many scientific facts available these days like uh, regarding evolution there are many good books which refuse the revolution theory and then there are many uh, historical uh, books which confirms the Bible stories are true okay we have to learn more and more, and you can learn it in the 
church. Listen to Hosea. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Let's read it together. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Why Israel was destroyed by Babylonians and Assyrians? Why they were destroyed? Hosea said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Bible was there, the Pentateuch was there, but they didn't read it, they didn't learn it, they didn't have the knowledge of God. That's why they worshipped the idols and they were going far, far away from God. Because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. Do not forget the law of God. Memorize them. Read them. You know. uh, Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Remember, this is what we should know, right? Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Let's read it together. Let us know. Let us pursue. The Lord is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain in the earth. Let us know, let us pursue the Lord. Then what happens? The light will shine like a morning. Morning, the sun rises, the shine, the, the, the sun will shine. Fill this whole place with the light. That's what will happen when you pursue the knowledge of God. He will come to us like the rain. The rain comes and then make all these plants grow. That's what happens when you learn the knowledge of God more and more. Like the latter and former rain to the earth. The knowledge of God is like a light and rain. And we can grow more and more, right? Let's grow more in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 3, the last verse. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Second Peter, chapter three, verse eighteen. Let's read it together. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What do you know about Jesus Christ? How much you remember our Lord Jesus Christ? And how much knowledge you have received from God? Are you effective in preaching the gospel to others? And do you have the great knowledge of the Bible? So you know that all the prophecies in Daniel and Revelations and you know what will happen in the future. You know what is God's plan for this world? What happens after rapture? What happens during the seven year tribulation? What happens during the Millennium Kingdom? And what would be the last judgment like? All this knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, the knowledge which really uh, necessary for our Christian life is all in the Bible. And we have to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's grow more. Let's pursue the knowledge of the Lord. And that's how... Um, we can serve our Lord better. Okay? Wise in what is good. And simple concerning evil. Some brothers, sisters, some Christians, they know a great deal about this world, but has no knowledge of the spiritual things or eternal things. That's very sad, actually, right? So let's be wise in what is good. And let's grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's how we glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we want to learn more and more about you. 
And there's a great deal of truth in the Bible. The love of God encourages us, empowers us, and guides us, teaches us, and everything good is hidden in Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us to pursue this precious knowledge and give us heart like the queen of south who came all the way to Solomon to get all to hear the, all the knowledge of Solomon because Lord Jesus you are wiser than Solomon you are greater than Solomon so we want to know more about you we want to learn more from you and we want to serve you more and more in coming days so thank you so much for this time and give us a heart to pursue the knowledge of God so that we can grow and grow until Jesus comes. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.